the American culture was defined best by John Jay, the first Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. Providence has been pleased to give this one connected country to one united people speaking the same language, professing the same religion, and attached to the same principles of government. This is what we mean by liberty. Welcome to American Liberty with Bill Lockwood. Welcome to American Liberty with Bill Lockwood. We thank you today for joining the program, and we really have a great, great program. Matter of fact, joining us from New York is a woman who's at the forefront of our fight for liberty, for our freedoms, our national security. She travels the country of ours tirelessly, continues to work and encourage and educate us that we might be able to face the challenges that we have in America. She's the founder and editor and publisher of AtlasShrugs.com. She's the executive director of American Freedom Defense Initiative as well as the Stop the Islamization of America. She's the author of the book, Stop the Islamization of America, co-author also of the Post-American Presidency, the Obama Administration's War on America, which features a forward by Ambassador John Bolton. Uh, you'll find her columns on World Net Daily. Also, Andrew Beitbart's Big Government, Big Journalism. She received the Annie Taylor Award for Courage in 2010 for the David Horowitz Freedom Center. Also in October 2011, I noted that the United States Marine Corps presented her with a flag flown on September 11, 2011, over Camp Leatherneck, and it said amid the battlefields of Afghanistan during the decisive operations against enemy forces in Helmand Province. It's my distinct pleasure to introduce to you today Mrs. Pamela Geller. Thank you so much for joining us today, Pamela. Thank you, Bill, for having me. Well, I tell you what, we're just excited to have you. We have a a venue here in North Texas. We're right here on the Red River, and uh, um, we like to talk about uh, different issues, and we try to get right down to the to the uh, nuts and bolts of it. And I wanted to, first of all, um, go into the, the uh, cancellations of the different venues that you have been involved with, uh, in lately. Uh, one of them was in uh, Sugar Land, Texas, right here in our own state, and the other one was in uh, Nashville, Tennessee, I understand, at a Preserving Freedom Conference and um, I wanted you maybe just to reflect a little bit upon that and about uh, the banning of free speech and um, the kind of curtailing of uh, what we're doing in America and trying to educate people regarding Islam. Well, the cancellation of my speeches is a deeply troubling trend, and it points to the norming of the Sharia, the norming of the restriction of free speech under the Sharia, under the Sharia are blasphemy laws. In Islam, blasphemy is considered anything that it criticizes or offends or insults Islam, even if it's the truth. And so we see in Muslim countries, uh, blasphemers are uh, executed. They're right. put to death. Here in the States, here in the West, in Europe, of course, in Canada, uh, your character is assassinated, and you are demonized, marginalized, and smeared. Uh, merely for telling the truth, because this is a war on the truth. Right. So in the case right. of Sugarland, mm. one or two phone calls was all that it took mm. to cancel that event. Now, we do know that when it was announced on my blog, atlasshrugs.com and various other websites, uh, hundreds, if not thousands, contacted Hyatt. As a matter of fact, people sold their stock. Um, and the turnaround was too slow where they couldn't do anything. They would like very much to, um, uh, to make it up. We will see if they do that. I've asked for another space, and I'll keep you posted on that. Yeah, thank you for that. In, in Nashville, it was, again, a freedom conference, and uh, the Hutton Hotel caved to uh, one or two calls of threats to their property, uh, Islamic supremacists who threatened uh, to uh, damage, or we can't get exactly what they were threatened because the Hutton won't release it. Right. More disturbing is that they didn't even report it to law enforcement because that's mm. against the law. You know, it's against the law. To report it's, it to, to the... To, not to, you know, yeah. to, to, to threaten a, a, any business or venue. Right. Um, but what troubles me is that it's easier for these corporations, these businesses, to cancel the voices of freedom right. uh, than it is uh, to, uh, uh, you know, uh, not cancel it. And that's deeply troubling. And when I say the norming of the Sharia, uh, we see here in America the mosking of the workplace where they're imposing Muslim prayer times on union contract, forcing non-union workers to lengthen their day. Uh, the Heinz Company, an enormously generous company to their Muslim workers. They have prayer rooms, they have prayer rugs. 
Uh, Any time you give way to Islamic supremacist demands, it, it, it just leads to more demands. Now they're being sued to stop the line, stop the line for Muslim prayer times. This is imposing Islam on the secular marketplace, because in Muslim countries, they don't stop the line. Right. They pray before work. They pray after work. Uh, but it, it's forcing non-Muslims to conform to the Sharia. That's right. You know, cab drivers who won't carry passengers who have uh, dogs or liquor, they want a separate line. They, the, the Muslim cab drivers in New York, uh, we have the TLC, the Taxi Limousine Commission, caving to Islamic demands. They don't, won't have the uh, ads for gentlemen's clubs on the mm. taxi tops. Now, these are not lewd ads. It's just uh, the name of the club, whether it's VIP or what have you, and mm. uh, the face of a girl. Now, whatever is in your mind is something else, but now right. that's a thought, cr- thought crime. So it's deeply disturbing. This is not a religious issue. This is a political issue. I don't Free care. Free speech issue, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, yeah. I don't care what you worship. Right. You can worship a stone. Just don't stone me with it. <laughs> right. That, that's yeah. really what this is about. And they, the, the, wearing the beard of a religion takes it to a whole other level, a sort of untouchable level. Well, you don't have this with Christianity or Judaism or Hinduism, uh, but there is a special, it's a supremacist movement to impose Islam. And if you want to see a cautionary tale, one only has to look to Europe. Uh, you know, one of the things that you mentioned that uh, I think that I heard you mention in your speech that was on uh, YouTube, uh, that is that uh, regarding the, the Hyatt uh, conference that was um, canceled, that I think you said mentioned that Ahmadinejad had actually spoken there or had spoken um, in a, some kind of conference regarding it or something. Is that right? How did that go? That's 100% correct. Uh, That's amazing. Hyatt hosted, uh, not only hosted uh, Ahmadinejad, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, but they, ha- they held a dinner there for him. Um, and we protested. We had thousands outside the Hyatt on 42nd Street in Manhattan. Well, this is a uh, one-way they, street, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, but they did not they did not cancel him. That's exactly right. And yeah. when they talk about uh you know uh, a bridge builder like Imam Raouf of the Ground Zero Mosques when he mosque he's asked uh you know who is he? What is he? He says I'm a bridge builder. Well, according to Islam and the uh one of the leading scholars on Islam, uh Saeed Katoub, he said we have to be bridge builders, but the bridge goes only one way. And that bridge right. goes to Islam. And so we have to also understand the double talk. We have to understand the deceit. And deceit is critical. Muhammad said war is deceit. And we are seeing that in this taqiyya. You know, taqiyya is deception right. and lies to advance Islam in, in non-Muslim societies. We mu- must be uh, cognizant of this in order to defeat it. And it, it needs to be de- de- defeated. We need to stand up for the, constitu- for the Constitution and our freedoms that are enshrined, in, you know, in the First Amendment. You know, uh, just thinking about that uh, here, just another step further, um, you made some good comments. I've heard you say some comments about um, uh, the weakness of America, not only the, the complicity of the media in some respects uh, for the covering up of what's actually happening, plus the weakness of American thought processes uh, that we might be able to combat this uh, with some kind of fortitude. I just wonder if you might say a few words about that. Well, it's the reason why I wrote my latest book, Stop the Islamization of America, A Practical Guide to the Resistance. Because the media, uh, the culture, is self-enforcing the Sharia. The media will not run the Danish cartoons. Comedy Central censored the word Muhammad on South Park, the television show, and they said, uh, you know, it, it, there was a, a fatwa put on the, the heads of the producers of South Park because they could put Muhammad in a huggy bear costume, well, because you can't show mm-hmm. Muhammad. And so this is the danger, that there is a war on the truth, and the truth is our key weapon in the war of ideas, in the information battle space. And so uh, I wrote this book, A, to outline What's happening? I believe the American people are like Helen Keller and someone moved the furniture. They know something's happening. They see something in the daily social fabric of their lives, and yet they're not given the tools to understand. Uh, Literally, our nation has been disarmed. Our school children are being disarmed by the institution of these Islamic curriculums, which are pure uh, dawah. They are scrubbed of the over 1,400 years of uh, jihadi wars, land appropriations, cultural annihilations, and enslavements. 
So it is key that people understand what's going on and then how to fight it. And I give a point-by-point primer, whether it's on the masking of the workplace or the masking of your neighborhood where these mega mosques are going up on these tiny streets, where, which is not zoned for such things, but you find these town councils, these city councils, these zoning boards, going to extraordinary lengths to accommodate um, Islamic supremacists. Many of these mosques, these beachheads, are being built by Muslim Brotherhood groups in America, like mm. the Muslim American Society, right. and they should be stopped. And stopping them and getting involved in this fight, uh, you become the target of a smear campaign, no matter who you are. You right. will immediately be labeled a racist, Islamophobic, anti-Muslim bigot. Now, you mentioned also um, the Islamization of the schools. I guess the, the, the schools are now uh, teaching this in different uh, elementary schools and so forth, and I think you've talked about that some, too, haven't you? Um, yes, yes, I've talked about it in length. Uh, in the book, there's a chapter devoted to this, and in the case of your state in Texas, you had Governor Perry institute an extensive uh, curriculum right. on 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 Islam, completely completely whitewashed. I ran the entire curriculum uh, at, at Atlas Shrugged, screenshots of everything. Um, and this was, uh, you know, Governor Perry felt the need for Texas, for Texans to have a quote greater understanding of Islamic culture. And um, he instituted with the Aga Khan this curriculum that's decidedly dangerous. I mean, why not institute a Christian curriculum right. and a Hindu curriculum and a Jewish curriculum? Why Islam? We do not need to make our school, dis- our school, our public schools, the battleground, a religious battleground. It should there should be a separation of mosque and state. That is the battle. Nothing more. But this is, and of course, in Islam, this is the problem because Islam is a complete system. It's not just a religion, but it's a complete, uh, a political, legal, social, dietary, academic system. And we must be vigilant in maintaining the separation of mosque and state. You know, I wanted to also kind of uh, talk about the legal system for just a moment. Uh, I was reading on uh, Matt Staver's website, uh, the Liberty Council. Um, he mentioned the Center for, uh, sec- uh, for a Security Policy, and uh, the statement was made that judges are making decisions deferring to Sharia law, even when these decisions conflict with constitutional law in America. Yes. The leading legal light on this is David Yerushalmi. He has helped write many of the um, uh, uh, foreign law prohibitions uh, in the uh, states, 23 states, where it's being um, considered uh, legislation is being introduced. Um, this is exactly right. We have a case in, I think it was in um, uh, Pennsylvania, where a Muslim, upon his death, asked that his estate be uh, div- divvied up according to Islamic law. And so you had a judge give two-thirds of the estate to the son and one-third to the daughter, because that's what Islamic, state, the Islamic law dictates. Now, uh, if, if someone chooses in their will to leave their property that way, that's one thing. But our judges are not to adjudicate that. Right. We don't adjudicate to, according to Islamic law. Or the judge in, in New Jersey who... Um, uh, followed the uh, the dictates of the Sharia with a man who had uh, uh, raped his estranged wife because in under the Sharia that is allowed and of course he was overruled by a higher judge but this should never have been right. introduced right and that was very recently wasn't it wasn't that just uh, these are all these are all right. within the past three or four months. Um, and, and we're seeing the, an increase in this. And to me, uh, any opposition to these pro- foreign law prohibitions is support for the most radical and extreme ideology on the face of the earth, one that diminishes and oppresses women. It's unconscionable. Right. You know, one of the, uh, one of the interesting things I heard you say in uh, one of your speeches was uh, that you speak for uh, those who have fled Islam, that you're not of course, uh, anti-Muslim, but you actually speak for those who are fleeing from Islam. I mean, you told a story, and I wonder if you might uh, tell it, about the Ohio girl who fled from her family and so forth and went to Florida. Rifka Barry. Right. Rifka Barry was a teenage girl who converted out of Islam. Uh, she had been a convert for four years, and her mosque spied on her. And uh, the Nor Mosque had spied on her and told her parents, and when her father found out, he threatened to kill her. 
And she, of course, ran away. I became aware of the story when I was sent the um, initial news report where she had run away because her friends thought that she was in danger because she was petrified that her family would find out. As a matter of fact, I believed, I, I was shocked when she appeared in Florida because they never, they never get away. Nor al Maliki, Amina and Sarah Saeed, Asiya Hassan, none of them uh, escape. And so I had gone to Florida to cover the trial because they had then sought to bring her back to that deadly household. And it was a very, um, it was excruciating to watch a nation obsessed with returning this girl to that household when, you know, millions of girls run away. And I don't see the nation chasing after them and they're, you know, being exploited by pimps and uh, drug dealers and so on and so forth. And so I was a very vocal public advocate for her. And what's interesting is how she was demonized in, in the news reports and how I subsequently suffered a, ten, suffered a $10 million lawsuit by her parents' Muslim attorney. And this is, a, this is the litigation jihad, where they try and sue you into silence because it was enormously expensive. It was upwards of $350,000 had my attorneys not done this for me pro bono. I don't know what I would have done. I mean, just the expert testimony alone. Uh, I was out of pocket. I had to raise $50,000 oh. to pay the experts. And they have at their, at their at fingertips millions of dollars to file these lawsuits. And people, again, the media is derelict, criminal, corrupt in their silence of this. Uh, you know, Molly Norris, who was a uh, ra- relatively unknown cartoonist in Seattle, when those producers from South Park, had a fatwa issued, a death fatwa issued on their heads. Uh, she, not knowing what she stepped into, said, well, let's everybody draw Muhammad Day. And I guess thinking that they couldn't kill us all. And, of course, within 24 hours, there was a fatwa on her head, and she had to go into witness protection. The FBI insisted she go into witness protection at her own expense, lose her job, lose her home, lose her name, and, 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 and I, most people never heard of Molly Norris. Right. You know, uh, Pamela, I want to ask you this. Can, uh, how can we, uh, people here in North Texas, support uh, you, or can we send money to a particular, um, you have a website uh, button or anything like that that we can do? Uh, thank or? you so much, because the battles that I'm waging, the bus campaigns, you know, the Leaving Islam bus campaigns for, for Muslims leaving Islam, um, uh, you know, which really just mirror the bus ads proselytizing for Islam, right. come to Islam, why Islam. Uh, you know, I've had to file lawsuits in Dearborn because they wouldn't run the ads, even though I won, they're still not running them, so I have to, you know, refile. Um, it costs an enormous amount of money. You can go to Atlas Shrugs. Dot com. Uh, you can say, um, I have filed for a 501c3. They're, you know, they're dragging their heels. Right. I don't have it yet. You can, you can use PayPal to contribute to Write Atlas. That's W-R-I-T-E Atlas at AOL.com. Um, if you need 501c3 status, you can go to Jihad Watch. My colleague, Robert Spencer, right. has 501c3 status. Uh, but, you know, we don't have any big donors. We do everything on really, uh, you know, shoestring. Right. Um, we raise as we go, but this battle is enormous. Well, you know what? I I just feel like that uh, the groundswell of individuals has supported different uh, candidates. As a matter of fact, for president, Ron Paul, for example, has had just uh, so much good fundraising, but it comes from just individuals. And um, I'm hoping that maybe uh, people in this area uh, that are listening to the program will be able to send money. And you said Jihad Watch, uh, Robert yeah, Spencer's. JihadWatch.org. Or write Atlas. You can go to okay. atlasshrugs.com or pamelagella.com on the top sidebar, on the top uh, bar, right underneath the banner is a uh, icon, you know, it says, it right. says donate. Yeah. You know, right. it's fairly self-explanatory. Right. Self-explanatory. Um, I'm not a fan of Ron Paul, just so that you know. I don't <laughs> <That's> believe, <okay. laughs> I don't That's like okay. his position on, you know, nuclear Iran, that it's fine that they should have it and that he's anti-Israel. Uh, this is anti-freedom. Whatever your religious denomination right. is, completely irrelevant. We must stand for those that um, are, 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 are freedom-loving people. It's a right. shared value system. It's the only democracy in the Middle East where right. women and non-Muslims are oppressed, persecuted, and subjugated outrageously. Again, the media does not report on the slaughter of Christians 
in Egypt, the slaughter of Christians in Nigeria, the slaughter of Christians in Indonesia, the slaughter of Buddhists in Thailand, uh, the slaughter of non-Muslims in the Philippines. It's just outrageous. Yeah, it is outrageous. You know what, uh, one of the things also I wanted to kind of uh, go toward um, in the time we have remaining, Pamela, is uh, the complicity, what I call the complicity of the Obama administration, uh, whether it be the U.N. uh, uh, laws that he votes for or... um, um, and that kind of thing, and so forth, and also su- uh, supplying uh, or assisting Libya in their uh, implementation of Sharia law and so forth. I just wonder if you might uh, reflect on that for a few moments. Well, I've been very involved in reporting on this for years. Uh, the historical opportunity that was uh, missed, that will always be a stain on America, is the only Arab Spring, the only real Arab Spring, which took part took place, excuse me, in Iran in June of 2009, where you had women leading that movement, women without hijab, women with hijab, Zoroastrian, Persians, took to the streets. They had signs, Obama, you're either with us or against us. Uh, the students had signs that they, we were sorry for in 1979, where, as you know, they ushered in yeah. the Ayatollah Khomeini and uh, President Carter helped usher in the rise of Islamic supremacism and expansionism across the world. Um, that was the real revolution. You would have removed Move the head of the snake uh, because they are Hezbollah. They are, are arming and um, uh, um, funding Hamas. They are, as you know, Syria is a proxy state, a vassal state of Iran. They are killing our soldiers in Iraq. They are funding the Taliban. The world would be on a different tra- trajectory if you had removed the democracy in Iran. Instead, <clears throat> he uh, helped uh, the Muslim Brotherhood. Right. He helped the Muslim right. Brotherhood in Egypt, and we knew that he was conspiring with the Brotherhood. He invited them to his speech in Cairo in June of 2009 when they had been banned. Uh, the Muslim Brotherhood had been banned in, in Egypt, and so had Sheikh Karadawi because they want to institute a universal caliphate. And so even in Libya, what were we doing in Libya? I was reporting, as I was in the case of Egypt, back as far as January, that in Libya there were al-Qaeda and jihadist elements in the opposition. And what were we doing there? I mean, we have absolutely no national interest there. We don't get their oil. Uh, France does. Let France take care of France, okay? And so the fact that we would drop a billion dollars to to install a government that it will be, it's already been announced by the transitional government that they will be, it will be a government um, ruled by the Sharia, is shocking. And Tunisia, moderate Tunisia, has also... Uh, held elections where uh, Sharia will be the uh, the right. b- bedrock, will be the foundation of the government. We are witnessing a tsunami of Islamic imperialism and expansionism not seen for centuries. You know what I'm um, I'm also aware of the fact that Obama assisted uh, the National uh, Transition Council in uh, setting up a Sharia uh, type laws in Libya, and uh, right there, what's going on there? Uh, just like you say, it's a tsunami taking place. Um, it is a frightening prospect, and it seems to me, just I, I wonder what you thought about this, that the, the very foreign policy of the United States is being transformed underneath uh, President Obama. Absolutely. I warned of this in my first book, The Post-American Presidency, The Obama Administration's War in America, uh, because I had been researching them for years. And there was, there was so much that the media refused. Their silence is absolutely corrupt and criminal on this man. Um, I don't fault him for being elected. There are a lot of bad men or a lot of incompetent men or a lot of um, men with evil agenda um, uh, that could run for president, but how could they become president? That's not Obama's fault. Right. That was clearly the fault of the left, the uber left, and the chokehold they have on the culture. And that's why what you're doing is so important. You, are, you and the blogosphere and the Internet talk radio, the tip of the spear, uh, because without us, a sort of guerrilla media warfare, uh, the battle would be over. We, we, we would be finished. Right. Uh, but uh, he clearly has demonstrated all along that he's abdicating American sovereignty. He's abdicating American hegemony. He sides with evil every time. He has abandoned Israel. He has abandoned our allies in Eastern Europe. He abandoned even even the government, the democratic government in the Honduras, when he sided with the Chavez-backed candidate who wanted to usurp right. the democratic process, as you know, and, you know, install a president for life. 
kind of a Chavez type of a um, government there. So uh, you can't say, well, you know, maybe he made a mistake or, well, he's consistently right. siding yeah. with evil. Yeah, he knows what he's doing. Yeah. Listen, Pamela, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm sorry that our time is out. It just ran by so quickly, but I wanted to remind listeners to go to Atlas Shrugged or atlasshrugs.com and to donate to your cause and to donate to, to your books, buy your books. And uh, thank you so much for taking your time to be with us today and help us to inform people regarding uh, this material. Thank you so much for having me. And hope maybe you can come this way and uh, be here in person one day. I'd love it if, if, they, if they don't ban me. <laughs> we won't ban you here in Wichita Falls now. <laughs> okay, Pamela, thank you so much. Bye-bye. Once again, you're listening to Bill Lockwood, American Liberty with Bill Lockwood. I want you to notice the website. We have patriotsforliberty.com. You can read more material on Patriots for Liberty. The four is the number four. And, of course, our special guest today has been Pamela Geller. Uh, we're so thankful that she's been able to join us, and her website is atlasshrugs.com. Uh, we encourage you to go to it. Uh, donate to her cause, donate uh, to her speaking out uh, for freedom, for free speech, and uh, look at the different issues that she has on atlasshrugs.com. Thank you once again for listening to American Liberty with Bill Lockwood. <laughs>